And this is a video on the objective calculate the margin of error for a confidence interval for a mean where the standard deviation is known, right? The population standard deviation sigma is, is known. And this is number two. So um, the second video on a question from your Newton Alta homework that's related to this objective. All right, so if you are still unfamiliar with the objective and what it's about, click on more instruction, read the notes that they have, watch the videos, look at the examples, and hopefully that helps you out. Uh, now this is my, like I said, this is my second video. I've already done one where I set up how to figure out the margin of error for a confidence interval, right, when you're given the confidence level. So I'll read through this and then you know, it's, it's really just a straight plug and play into a formula once you, once you have it established. So a bank offers auto loans to qualified customers. The amount of the loans are normally distributed and have a known population standard deviation of $4,000. So we'll use four. Sigma's four. And an unknown population mean, right? And we would try to guess what that population mean is using a confidence interval. All right, a random sample of 22 loans is taken, so there's your n, right, sample size, and gives a sample mean of $42,000. So 42 is the x bar here, it's the point estimate. It's gonna be the middle of our confidence interval. So we would just need to find the margin of error to then be able to complete our confidence uh, interval estimate of me of the mean of mu. So find the margin of error for the confidence interval for the population mean with 90% confidence level. All right, and round your answers to two decimal places. All right, so if you recall from the first video on this objective, the margin of error for a confidence uh, interval was when you were, you know, when you're estimating a mean and you know sigma, it's one formula. Uh, when you're estimating a mean and you don't know sigma, it's a different formula. <laughs> just barely, just barely. And when you're estimating a proportion, it's a different formula. So you got to really pay attention. And they already told us here, you know, we know sigma. We know the population standard deviation and we're estimating a mean. So it was this, it was, you know, what z-score has an area of half alpha above it. And then multiply that by the standard deviation, right? We're doing that that many standard deviations above the middle and that many standard deviations below the middle to get our lower and upper limit for the confidence interval. And the standard deviation was, you know, sigma over the square root of the sample size. Hopefully you recall all this from the last video. Now what is this alpha? Now remember they said we wanted not, we had a 90% confidence interval that we're trying to create. So we have a 90% confidence level. Now if 90% is our confidence level, then the value of that alpha that's mentioned here, alpha is called the significance level. You don't need to know that yet, but the word will come up later. Alpha is the significance level. And uh, this is just what area would be left over. All right, we'd be looking under a normal curve and have the area under the curve between two values be 90%, and the area left over would be 10%, all right, or 0 0.1. So this half of alpha would be 5%. Right? So for this particular question, our margin of error here it's going to be what z-score has 5%, right? This is half of alpha, has 5% above it, multiplied by the standard deviation. Now, again, we were told that the population standard deviation is 4, right, $4,000. And we were also told that a sample of 22 loans was taken. So this is 4 divided by the square root of 22. Right, we were told sigma was 4, we were told n was 22. Now we just need to find this from a little chart. Right? And back on the website, back on the problem, you see my little chart here with, with different critical values. These are called critical values. These, these z with the subscripts, these are just, you know, 
z scores with certain areas above them. So the z score with 5% above it is 1.645. So then back on my paper, I pop that in. Right. So the margin of error for whatever uh, whatever confidence interval we'd be creating is 1.645 times, you know, four divided, uh, sorry, I don't know, put the square root too early, four divided by the square root of 22. And we're asked to round this value to, you know, two decimal places. So I'll pull the calculator up. And we have one, 0.645 times 4 divided by the square root of 22. And rounding this number on the calculator to two decimal places, that would be 1.40. And this is what I'll enter as my margin of error. You know, if I were actually going about creating a 90% confidence interval to estimate the population mean. So 1.40. Yeah, wonderful. And again, please read read through your answer explanations. You know whether you're right or wrong, especially if you're wrong, right? Just to see if you can figure out what went wrong. And I don't believe there's any second part to this. Nope. So. Hopefully that helps when you go through that kind of problem on your own, and thank you very much for watching.